Good afternoon. Is this working? There we go. Okay, great. Um, hi there. My name is Matt Sullivan. I am a developer advocate at Google. I am very happy to be here. I'm also very jet lagged, so um, we'll see how this goes. Um, I am here to talk about Flutter in action, not Flutter in abstract. I do not want to spend a bunch of time talking about concepts in slides. What I want to do today is to give you um, an experience of how, or to give you a flavor of how the developer experience with Flutter works. So I'm going to spend most of my time actually coding up here on stage, which nothing is going to go wrong when you're jet lagged with live coding. Um, and I'm going to breeze through things fairly qu quickly. And so my idea here is not for you to focus on the individual things I'm potentially doing, but to give you an overall flavor for what it is like to actually build a Flutter app. So we'll see how this goes. First off, um, even though I can barely see, show of hands for people who have heard of Flutter. Oh, OK. I don't even need to do an introduction. This is great. Um, but how many of you are actually using Flutter? Ooh, OK, OK. Well, we'll see if we can uh, change your mind about that. So, Flutter in action. What is Flutter? Flutter builds these. Um, these are four apps. They've all been built with Flutter. Three of them are in production, and one is a demo app we uh, had built just to demonstrate um, the fluidity of Flutter. Um, and they're all very different apps. One is a mindfulness app, uh, one is a music app, and one is um, a, an e-commerce app in China. And so Flutter is fairly general um, in terms of the different use cases it can be applied. But this is what Flutter does. Flutter lets you build apps on, bio, uh, on both iOS and Android. The TLDR, why, what makes Flutter different? Well, we have focused um, heavily on being able to let you build customized fluid UI. This is why we render all of the widgets or the UI components ourselves. We do not fall back to either Androids or iOS's um, native implementations of those. It gives us the ability to give you strong customizability. It gives us the ability to optimize the renderer. We use a reactive pattern for building um, apps. Um, much like React Native does. And that gives us the ability to very quickly, um, A, let you build out apps. We think it's a nice model for doing that. But more importantly, it gives us the ability to create the type of fluid experiences that we can expect because we have stateless and stateful widgets and we can optimize around those patterns. You're going to see me do a lot of live coding, which is going to have what we call hot reload, which is where I make a change and it will blow up very, very quickly or it, the change will appear. Um, and that's great because we're pushing the Dart VM into the um, app at build time. We do not do that at release. People have come up to me today saying, how am I supposed to use um, Flutter when it builds an APK of size 35 meg? Well, yes, it does when you're in debug mode and you get all of the tooling that we provided you. But when you build it for release, it compiles natively to both um, down to machine code, um, on both iOS and Android. And at that point, your APK is currently about 4.4 megs in size. So we're not zero, but we're also not 30 meg either. And we have put an emphasis in developer tools, because what's the point in giving you a new SDK for building apps and then making your experience miserable? So I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code today. Um, you'll see that there are others that you can use as well. Super quick TLDR of Flutter. We have a fantastic Android Studio plugin for those who love Android Studio. Um, it gives both Dart and Flutter support, um, support for templates and snippets. More importantly, we've um, embedded visual tools to help you um, debug, to help you monitor performance with our widget inspector and our debugging support. This is a great one to use when you really want to dig deep into your application. We've also got a great plugin for um, Visual Studio Code. Um, it uses, it has full support for IntelliSense, again with the templates and debugging. It doesn't have the visual um, debuggers, at least not at the moment, um, in performance, um, but I will be using this today because it's a nice lightweight IDE and it lets me build up code really, really quickly. And if I end up in a situation where I'm having to debug what I'm writing on screen today, something has gone really horribly wrong. OK, fundamentals of Flutter. What is it like to write Flutter? What does it mean to be Flutter? What we're going to do today is we're going to explore it through code. 
Um, and we're going to look at this app that I knocked together um, a little while ago and then um, updated for uh, this talk. And it is a, an app which lets you exp um, uh, uh, pulls down a list of books from the Google um, Books API. The reason I use that is one of the few APIs we have which doesn't require authentication, so it's easy for me to use. And we're going to dig into this and see what it's like to actually build this out. If you want access, if you, you can see the bottom of the screen, all of the source code on here is in GitHub, and you'll be able to access it um, and download it and clone it afterwards. I think I have that link at the end as well. So here's my setup. I have, um, at the moment, the um, iOS simulator running. That could be um, a physical Android device. In fact, I have one in my bag. If people want to see the proof in the pudding and see me plug it in and do the same thing afterwards, I'm more than happy to. Um, it's just quick and easy for me to set it up this way. On the left, I have um, a, a Visual Studio code. And what I have is a little book app here. And so it's pulled down a list of books over the network. And I can scroll through these books. And you can see that it's doing the iOS-y, bouncy, scrolly thing. On Android, that would do the inkwell effect. Um, I've implemented a second screen here. Um, which um, just displays some of the uh, information. And then I have um, used a plugin that I can break out and I can launch a URL um, in a separate browser and get more information about those books. So there's a few things here, and we'll explore one or two of them. Fundamentally, here is my source code. You can see at the moment I've hard-coded the URL APIs um, in there, and I have a few for pulling the different books. And if there's one thing you need to bear in mind for this, is that everything I do today is a widget. You see my main um, uh, 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 function there. The run app is taking a widget. The book finder app is a widget, which I've defined, which is a stateless widget. And inside, what it's doing is it's setting up the infrastructure for my app. I'm saying, OK, let's make this a material app. Let's give it a title. And let's set a theme. Now, I could go along and I could go, you know what, I hate green. I'm going to go blue today, and that's fine. And that has taken the code, it's pushed it over, and it has changed my app. And there is heart reload in action, and we'll see that happening on a very regular basis, I hope. Um, and then what it's doing is it's, as a home, going to another widget, because everything is a widget. So my book finder page creates a scaffold. This is a widget that gives support for my app bar, which you can see here. I've called it book finder. I could call it um, something else, like, and there we go. Um, I have, um, I've thrown an icon in here at random. I can't remember why, but I did. And then I am calling into this book list um, widget, which I have defined um, in a big load of code over here. But we're not going to pay any attention to that, because what we're going to do today is I am going to completely ignore all the stuff that I've written before, and I'm going to see how much of this I can re-implement in the next 32 minutes and 8 seconds. Um, so what I'm going to do, so let's kick off. I'm going to create a new widget. I'm going to use our nice IDE support to quickly blow out a stateless widget. I'm going to call this my book list. And this is going to, going to return an empty container. And what I can do here is I can comment this out, and I can call my book list instead. Ooh, and I can spell that correctly, too. And that would help. Great. So what have I done? I've completely destroyed my app, and I've replaced all of the stuff that I have written with a blank widget. So let's see how far I can get actually re-implanting some of these. I am going to use some helpers. The first is I have this very simple data structure for a book. It's got a title, an author, a thumbnail URL, and a Google Books URL. And I've got a little constructor here, and that's about it. I've also got some code down here to parse some JSON for a book that I'll use later on. And then what I have is I have a few methods in here in my Books API. I have one that fetches books from an asset, which I have included in my project. I have one here which fetches from a URL, which I was using earlier to pull down the books. And then finally, I actually have hard-coded some books into my app just to give me a starting point. So that's great. So this is what I'm going to use. So let's go back to main. I'm going to create this. So the first thing I can do is I can actually prove that this is running. So let's say I wanted to add a new widget. So I'm going to create a center widget. And notice that widgets are not just about UI. It's not a widget is a button and a widget is an app bar. Widgets are also for layout. I have a center widget that I'm going to use here. Um, it's going to take a child, as most widgets do. And I'm going to give this some text. 
And in this text, this is where we're going to have our book list. Okay, there we go. So I've created my first visual widget, which is centered, and it is some text. Now, this is all well and good, but what I want to do is render a list. So let's quickly pull the list. So the first thing I want to do here is in my widget, what I'm going to do in my build method, which is where um, all of the work is done for constructing the widget. I'm going to create a final variable. It's going to be my book list. And I'm going to get that hard-coded books there. Perfect. So you can see that Dart doesn't require me to explicitly define the, uh, the, the type. What I have here is um, a book list. At the moment, it's showing me um, a warning that I'm not actually using it. So how do I render a list? Well, you know, rendering a list on, um, you know, certainly places like Android, you have to create a recycler view, you have to create your view handler, you have to do a bunch of things to make sure that that works. On Flutter, because we're controlling our, all, our own renderer, we can take care of that for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all of this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a list view. So there we go. So I have a list view, which is going to list some stuff. List view, and notice that I can highlight over these and I can see what this takes. And this takes a bunch of things, but most importantly what it does is it takes children. And guess what? I have a book list, so clearly that's all I need and I'm done. But actually I don't, because what's happening here is everything is a widget. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to list, show in a list a list of books when I actually have to show a list of widgets. So let's break out some functional programming in Dart. I'm going to map my book list to a widget. And let's just put in um, the author's name for the uh, uh, author for the time being. Um, and because map returns an iterator, I just have to do a little bit of extra work. There we go. Um, there is a list rendered. It's a really unexciting list, and I really should have put in title. Um, but there we go. That's all I need to do. In terms of if I had like a ton of information in here, um, Flutter will take care of recycling what's off screen and what's on screen. To create a list is very, very straightforward. So this is all fine. And what I'll do is I'll lay this out a little better. And notice that like my IDE is auto, auto laying this stuff out for me. So that's great. I've got a book list, but that's kind of ugly. What I want to do is I want to get back to what I had before. And in order to show you what that is, look, I can simply do this. And you see, that's what we're aiming for. So notice that I can jump back and forth between widgets as I build this. And again, this is my experience. I make a change, I see what's happening, and I pull it down. So this is ugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new widget that is going to render a book tile for me. So I'm going to create a new widget, which is going to be a stateless widget, again. And I'm going to call this book tile. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a constructor. And I'm going to pass in a book for it to render. The reason that this is stateless, even though it has what you would think to be state, is, is that this isn't actually state that changes. This is um, immutable. So it is effectively stateless, because I'm passing in an immutable object. It's not holding state. It's just holding some data. So that's great. I have a container. So what I can do now is let's get rid of this. And instead, I'm going to pass in a book tile. And notice how I'm just swapping widgets back and forth. It doesn't matter what type of widget it is. It is um, just showing a widget. So we'll get our book title. And what I'll do here is I will just return the text for my book again. And probably nothing's going to change. That's fine. I know it's working, because if I do this, there we go. Great. So let's see. How quickly can I make this a more attractive widget? Well, Flutter has a ton of widgets out of the box for you to use. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of those, which is called a list tile. So list tile supports a ton of things. And one of the cool things about Flutter is, is that all the source code for your widgets is shipped with the SDK. If I want to see what list tile is, I can go to the definition. And here is a source code for list tile. I can see here are all my, comment, or my, uh, my, my code comments. I can see that there's a little example in here. I can see here is everything that it takes. I can go through. I can check out the source code. I can do tons of stuff here. A lot of the time, I don't even bother going to the web anymore to look up the documentation that's generated from this. I just stay in my IDE and I have a look at it. 
And because the code is here, you can learn how these widgets are written, and you can learn how to create your own widgets to customize the ones that are there. So we're going to return a list tile. A list tile has the concept of a title. And we are going to give here, because everything is a widget, I'll need to pass a title, and I'm going to give this book dot title. All right, that's not looking much better, but at least it's better spaced. What else can I put in my title or in my, my, the, 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 my list tile? I can give it a subtitle. And let's give that book dot author. All right, that's looking a little better. Um, I'd still like to get some um, images in there. So why don't we give it a leading? And let's use another widget out of the box. We have a circle avatar. Um, and I could run that probably now, and that's going to give me, okay, well, that's kind of cool. But how am I actually going to get something in there? Well, I want to put an image in there. So I know this takes a, um, does it? Yes, this takes a background image. And now I need to load an image from a network. I don't have any code written for doing that. This is going to be awkward. Well, it turns out actually it isn't, because we can do things like network image, give it a URL, and that's not what it's called, book dot, uh, where is it, thumbnail URL. Look at that. So what this has done is this has, in the space of a line of code, and this is another widget that's built into the platform, it will go to the network, you give it a URL, it will pull down the image. I haven't written any of that code. This is not me doing sneaky things behind the scenes. This is me using the stuff out of the box. These are smart enough to do caching and whatnot as well, so you can get direct benefit from that. Now, I'm still missing something, which was my, um, uh, my button on the other side, so I can do a trailing. And at the moment, I'm just going to put in a blank icon. So I'm going to do an icon, and, which is a widget, funnily enough. And there are tons of widgets in here. I'm just going to make it widget.book. And there we go. So we have gone from basically this amount of code, which is uh, like 20 lines of code. And here's what it looked like originally. And here's what it looks like now. Oh, there we go. So that didn't take too long, and it exposes the fact that I'm terrible at design, and I'm using Flutter to basically um, support my app. But this is cool. So where are we at this point? We are able to render a list. But this list is hard-coded, so you should call foul. You should go, that's a hard-coded list. In reality, you should be pulling that from a network, and you have to take care of the fact that that data isn't ready immediately. You have to go and fetch it. How are you going to do that? OK, so let's see if we can extend this. Let's take a look at. Um, uh, back at our books API, and we have this fetch books from asset. So all this code does here is it's going to take this um, JSON, which I cribbed from the Google Books API. So this is included in my project. And what it's going to do is it's going to load it, and then I'm going to run my parse book JSON, which is going to return a list of books. But it's not, because in order to read this, this is a non-trivial in terms of time um, operation. So this is actually um, asynchronous. So because parsebook takes a string, I have to await for that operation to finish. And I have to make this whole um, function asynchronous because um, you can't block um, in Dart. And so this is actually going to return a future, which is a promise of my list of books. And so that's great. So maybe I can just go in here and um, where I have my hard-coded books, I can do fetch books from asset. Um, and this is going to return me a future list of books. So I'm kind of broken here because I can't map a promise of delivering something. I actually have to map a list. So what I might have to do, I have to create a stateful object. I'm going to have to like check to see when things are loaded. I'm going to have to do all this logic. Well, it turns out we don't have to. Because what you will commonly do in Flutter, and you'll see this regularly, is you are going to use a new widget called Future Builder. And what Future Builder does is Future Builder takes a future, or a promise, whatever you'd like to call it, which in this case is book list. And instead of a child, it's going to take a builder, which I need to spell properly. And a builder is going to take a context 
and a snapshot in time. And we are going to, from this, have to return a uh, widget. And I always forget to put the return in when I do this. Hooray, okay. Still broken because I'm still actually trying to map my future. So what I can do now is, my, this is gonna be a snapshot in time and just because I want you to see the typing here. Um, I'm actually gonna put this up because this helps. Um, list, this is what it's actually um, returning. And so what I can do here is I can take my snapshot and I can go, well, let's just map sna the, um, the, the, the data and we're good. And I have completely messed this up. There we go. So what happens when I run this? It is going to um, run the original code because I accidentally deleted it. So let's do that. Okay, let's see if back on trap. Oh, okay, well it works. So that is actually loaded in from my JSON. And there we go. But you noticed at the beginning, it threw that horrible error thing. Let's do that again. And so what's happening here is I am saying, show me the data. And what Future Builder is doing is it's saying, okay, I'm going to render immediately because I have to show something. But there is no data, so I'm getting an error. But then when the data comes through, it's then re-rendering when the data is ready. So it kind of half works. But what I really need to do is I need to check to see if my snapshot has some data. And if it has data, I'm gonna return this stuff. And I should technically put that in curly braces, but we can get away with it for this. Um, otherwise, if there's no data, let's show a different widget. So I am going to, actually no, let's curly brace this because I have returns in here. There we go. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna return return um, a new widget and I have this handy circular progress indicator and let's see what happens now when I run this and that might have been too quick to do anything so let's see if I can kickstart it again there we go so notice now in just a few lines of code, I've actually taken into account the asynchronicity of having to pull data. Now that circular progress indicator looked horrible up there, so what I can do is I can actually center this. Again, I just use my widgets, save, and again, too quick, let's see if I can force it. And there we go. So, this is closer to the real world. That's kind of cool. But hey, loading JSON um, from assets, that's kind of cheating. I want to see it happening from a network. Okay, so what can I do there? Well, my books API has fetch books from URL. Okay, that's kind of cool. It's taking the same, or it's going to return the same stuff as before. That's also kind of cool. And it takes a URL. So maybe I can go in here and I can change this to URL. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to pass in a URL here. So this is going to look actually kind of like the other one. And I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to quickly um, give this a constructor. Uh, this is going to be URL. And this is going to be this string URL. Not very exciting URL. What's going to happen? Let's have a look. And look at that. That has now pulled that from the network. So again, I've used some supporting stuff just like for book, you know, a book data object and a couple of things. Let's take a quick look at how much code it costs me to pull that from the network. Because if you take a look at Books API, to make a network call in Flutter is one line of code. And I don't have to spin up async tasks or anything else because, again, I can take advantage of the asynchronicity of the platform if asynchronicity is actually a word. And all I need to do is HTTP.get I'm checking for the status code. If I get, um, if it's good, 200, I'm gonna parse the body. Otherwise, I'm gonna throw an exception and stuff is gonna happen. So that's kind of cool. 
And then here, you've seen that I'm able to handle all of this. So we have written maybe about 30 lines of code, and we've gone from having nothing to actually having a list, which scrolls, um, pulling data from the network and being able to show it. Now, if I look down here, I bet, oh, look at that. I'm actually broken here. And this is how you can debug in Flutter. I, in real time, in my app, see that I have an error. And what is my error? My URL is not equal to null. OK, I can kind of also take a look at, um, not this. Um, I can take a look at my debug console. And I can take a look at my error code. And I can scroll up the top. And I can see, OK, it's network image. And network image is having an issue. Because guess what? Some of these books do not actually have URLs. So if I look at this in my code, what I can do is I can just go down here and I can go, OK, here's a network image. But if I don't have book.thumbnail URL is not equal to null, I can do this. Um, and it's deleted network image on me. Uh, put it back in. Otherwise, I'm just going to return a null widget. There we go. And notice that in real time, it is near real time, it has updated, it has resolved the error, and I am on track again. I do not actually have to jump out of my flow, which is really, really, really cool. And so what this is doing now is when my background image is null, circle avatar is just simply showing a blank circle. I could put stuff in there, but for the sake of time, I won't. So we have gone basically from um, um, uh, what I showed you originally to having some of the functionality here. OK. so. Let us quickly jump back to the slides. Flutter has fantastic plugins and packages. If you are not using them, you are not doing it right because you will ultimately always end up using some. I'm using at least two or three even in that simple app. Um, I cannot stress how um, useful um, the packages and plugins that um, exist in Flutter um, are. We have a website, um, Flutter Packages, you can go in and you can search for all the different well. And there are about 1,500 packages out there, probably like a couple of hundred for Flutter, the rest for Dart. You can use Dart packages in Flutter um, to your heart's content. How do you include a, um, a package? All you need to do is, all you need to edit is the pub spec, which is kind of a, a, a configuration um, uh, 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 file inside your app. So you'll notice that there is a dependency section. Um, and in the dependency section, I have here not only the Flutter SDK, but you can see here I'm using an image picker, I'm using a camera, Google sign-in, a URL launcher. And all you need to do is include it here and do nothing else. Um, I'll show you that in a second. But these are the Flutter packages, or some of them, that we maintain in Google ourselves. Because we feel that in order for you to have a good experience building Flutter, we need to ensure that you have quality packages for doing important things. URL launcher for launching URLs, not only for web, but for the Play Store or the App Store, or internal deep linking and whatnot, that is very important. We've made sure that you are able to show video in your app easily. Um, we have a very simple image picker which lets you bring up the camera roll or lets you take a photo immediately. Um, and for those of you who want to go to lower level and do things like show full screen camera with overlays, we have the camera package which supports video recording, picture taking, controlling which camera is being seen. Um, it's pretty powerful. We have multiple plugins for Firebase. If you want to use ML Kit, if you want to use the uh, Authenticator, if you want to use the data stores, we have, a pack we have packages for those as well. If you want to do some very simple or key value sh saving of data, we have shared preferences there. And the community has stepped up and created things like a SQLite um, package. And I don't want to say that you know, these are Google packages, these are the best packages. We try to maintain the best quality. Our community has built fantastic packages as well, and I just do not have the time or the screen real estate to be able to talk about all of them. So let's quickly jump back in and see how do I use packages. So in my pubspec.yaml, um, I have my URL launcher. Let me just bring up this again so you can see. Debug console, there we go. If I was to, say, add a new one, like I've edited the file that's changed, and save that, you'll see that it launches the Flutter packages get. It will pull all the packages in, and I'm done at this point. 
That's it, that's all I need to do. The package is pulled in. If it has Android and iOS specific code, they will be injected in, and all of the Dart stuff will be in there as well. So that's really all you have to do. So let's go back to the code, and let's actually try to use this. Because one of the things that my original app did was I could click in this icon over here, and it would take me to an external link. So how hard is it going to be to use a package? So the first thing I need to do is I need to have some sort of, let's just define a function. Um, uh, let's define a function, uh, navigate to URL. Uh, we'll take a URL, and stuff will happen. Great. So how do I change that icon to a, um, let's scroll up the top. Um, how do I change my icon to actually do something? Well, it's pretty simple, because with an icon, I also have a um, button icon widget. Everything's a widget. Uh, a button icon takes an icon. There we go. And what it also takes is an on, oops, uh, let's see, trailing button icon, 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 stop books, what have I done wrong here? Where am I going wrong here? Let's double check. Oh. I have an icon button, not a button icon. Well done. Um, and what I'm going to do when um, that is clicked is I am going to call uh, navigate. Um, Navigate to URL, and I'm going to pass that book dot Google URL. Okay, great. So that's probably not going to do anything at the moment, um, but it will probably give me. Uh, okay. So what I need to do now is I need to implement some more stuff. Let's. Le oh, also I have an error, and my error here is I should not be doing that. And there we go. Okay. Now when I click, oh look, I get an inkwell effect. It doesn't do anything at the moment, but I get an inkwell effect. We have seven minutes and 59 seconds. Right, navigate to URL. I have included the URL um, launcher package. I have sneakily also included its import statement earlier, so I wouldn't have to put it in. So what am I going to have? Well, URL launcher gives us a launch um, um, a, a function, which takes a URL string. So let's give it the URL. Uh, what does this return? This is returning a future of void, so I technically don't have to do anything with it yet. So let's save that. And now let's uh, choose one of these. Oh, and there we go. That's kind of it. I just included a plugin, and um, I now have um, support for that. That was. This is how easy it is. Even though we're doing a lot of work under the hood on Android and iOS, very different things to be able to launch URL, we have abstracted it away. This isn't really the end of it because I've actually kind of, this is very, very brittle because what I should be doing, what happens if that URL is not um, valid? So what I can do here is I can, if I can launch URL, then um, let's launch that URL. We got a problem here because, and this is what you'll kind of experience in Flutter as you get used to it, um, the whole concept of um, futures. This is not returning a Boolean, this is returning a future of a Boolean, so my if statement says no. So I can await this. But then it says, well, hang on, this function isn't asynchronous, so I kind of need to async this. Okay, now we're in a better place. Theoretically, I should probably await here, but it doesn't really matter. But the interesting thing is even though this function is now async, I can still call it from here because, you know, I'm simply saying on pressed, go do something, and I don't particularly care about the result at the moment. So this will probably work the same. There we go. So that's working. Now, if it fails, let me just do one more thing because we have a little bit of time. I want to show something in the screen. How hard is it to do that? I am an iOS. iOS didn't really do the snack bar thing, but guess what? We don't use the platform widgets. We do the Flutter thing. So let's see if I can get a snack bar working. So I'm going to get an instance of my scaffold, um, which I can get through the context. Now, what I'm going to have to do is pass the context in because I'm doing this in a separate um, function. So there we go, context. 
And then up here, I'm just going to pass in my build context. Okay. And so now I have scaffold. What does this give me? This gives me the ability to show bottom sheets if I wanted to. It also gives me the ability to show a snack bar. So let's give it a snack bar. Guess what snack bar is? Snack bar is a widget. So we can create a snack bar. Snack bar um, needs, what do you need snack bar? Content. Guess what content is? Content is a widget. And let's just say can't load URL. So that's fine. Um, this is never going to be triggered at the moment because all the URLs are valid. So let's just break this a little bit and reverse this. So there we go. And then I click it, and there we go. There's a snack bar. Super, super simple. So again, in the space of about 30 minutes, we have taken um, what was originally um, this, in fact, I don't even need to do that anymore. I just need to do this. And we have this functionality. We have this functionality. The only thing we didn't actually implement was this additional page. I don't have quite enough time to do that, um, but um, there is an example of it, um, of restyling this really, really quickly. OK. So I hope that that gives you a flavor of what it's like to build in Flutter. I wasn't really fl sure I practiced that beforehand. But it is that simple just to construct it. Imagine if you as a developer to sit down with a designer and say, let's see what we can put together and literally start to write the code then and there and push things in. We have designers who have been, oh dear, this code thing, how am I supposed to actually build your design? Once they actually learn a little bit of Dart and start to build out just the basics here and forget about the future builder, just the lists and whatnot, um, they adapt to it really quickly. Now, there are community efforts to take things like sketch um, uh, diagrams and convert them into Dart, um, and so that's cool. Um, but I hope you get a flavor for just how easy it is to prototype, not even prototype, that's mostly production ready um, in terms of code. I want to touch on a few other things. Um, I'm not going to have time to show this live, but one of the things we're working on hard is the being able to add Android, being, excuse me, being able to add Flutter to existing Android and iOS apps. So at the moment, um, if you get the latest Flutter plugin, you will see when you create a new Flutter project, there's a new one called Flutter Module. So you can create a Flutter Module which will wrap a Flutter um, app as a Gradle module, which you are then again able to import through Android Studio as a regular Gradle module and place it inside an Android app. Um, so we can do all that, and it has, we have great um, support there. At the moment, we're focusing on supporting things at the activity level and on iOS at the like, main screen level. But we are working hard on also supporting fragments and views, so you will be able to embed Flutter not only in as a full page, but in a section of your Android app as well. We already have people doing this. Alibaba um, has done this with their app. They have taken their Android app and iOS app, and they have started to replace portions of it with Flutter and rolled it out with great success. Um, we are still working hard on this, and over the next couple of months, you'll start to see this land, and we'll have a bunch of documentation at the same time for it. Very, very briefly, here are two apps in production. The one on the left is the Google AdWords app, because we have built Flutter not only for you, but for ourselves. We rewrote our AdWords app in Flutter, and now we are having great success in terms of productivity and just in terms of being able to deploy the same features across both platforms simultaneously to great effect. This is the Alibaba app that I mentioned. The main reason I show this one is that this is deployed in China to 50 million devices. So this should hopefully banish any concerns that Flutter is not ready for production because these are on not your you know, Pixel 3s and your um, iPhone Xs. These are deployed on handsets you typically see, see in places like the Chinese market, which are fragmented um, Android um, uh, uh, system with, my screen keeps disappearing, um, with, um, uh, that's a nice photo. Um, it's not mine, no. Um, and with like low powered devices with low powered GPUs and limited memory. So hopefully this, is giving you an indication that 
Flutter is, is, you know, don't get the idea that this is premium development only. This is also for your stock um, Android handsets as well. Do I have any more? Useful links. It's on here. My useful links are definitely on here. <laughs> I'm not going to read them out to you. Um, but there are useful links. I'm going to, I'm gonna, okay. Um, Flutter.io, um, go check that out. If you Google Google Code Labs, there are seven code labs in, um, uh, for Flutter. Fantastic place to start and get to know things. We are completely open source. I've got one second, so I'm going to go slightly over. We are completely open source, and all of the code for Flutter is on GitHub, Flutter slash Flutter. And all of our plugin code is in Flutter slash plugins. We always like to get pull requests from the community. Um, there's a couple of other links. I can share them later on. This is my thank you slide. Thank you very much, and I hope that was useful. Any questions? Oh, any questions? Oh, loads of questions. Okay, I'm not going anywhere, right? Uh, could you give us a brief idea of what is going on with testing Flutter apps, like uh, oh. how it integrates with uh, CI systems, what options mm -hmm. we have for testing, I think. That's so one of the things that you get with Flutter, because we um, control the full rendering, we've actually built a full headless testing framework for you as well. So not only can you do unit tests in the Dart code, you can actually go in and in code, you say, instantiate this widget or this tree of widgets. Pump this widget to move it forward X number of milliseconds. Now check to see this. So there's a fantastic headless, it is a really nice testing experience. And we also have a driver driven one where you can plug a device in and it will drive all the tests on that as well. And they're very easy to run from the command line so it's very easy to integrate with CI systems. Uh, are there examples on the code labs on how to use the testing not in the code labs, but on flutter.io, we have a section on testing. And also, if you look at one of the great places to go is to go to the Flutter, Flutter GitHub repo, because we have heavily tested all our own widgets. And it's a really good place to go. And when you get more, when you want to sort of dig deeper and get more nuanced in your testing, yeah. you can go and like completely plagiarize what the, um, the engineering team has done. Plagiarism is good, by the way. That was yeah. Nice session. So you are hinting upon like adding the Flutter in your current Android app or the iOS app, right? Yes. So like means when we are doing that, like means it is interoperable with Java Kotlin, uh, means like I, or I would like to, means I can just do a couple of screens in Flutter, means how to mm -hmm. approach it, I just wanted to know. So not only can you, you can, so you could do that um, and you can, but there is a good interop story. We have the concept of um, platform channels and um, event channels. And what that means is you can actually write so if you were observant, you would have seen that in my project structure, there was an Android folder and an iOS folder. And they are actually full-blown Android Studio projects and iOS projects because we still have to use the underlying tools to build an APK. We still have to use the underlying tools to iOS. But it does mean you can dive in there and you can write Kotlin. Okay. And you can write um, Swift slash Objective-C. And with platform channels, you can communicate from the Dart code to Kotlin and Swift or vice versa. So you could, if you had like a lump of business logic written for iOS and Android, you could take those now, you could build a Flutter UI on top of it, and you could interop between the two. The one thing we don't, are not out to do is like, you know, push um, the Android and the iOS development pieces to the side. We're trying to make it so that we give you a lot of options. And so we've gone to a lot of trouble to make sure that you can interoperate between those, not only at the UI level as I talked about, but also at the code level where you can have business logic in either side and call back and forth. Okay. And is it like, is it currently going on, the work is going on behind it or we can just start doing it? Platform channels have been here forever. Okay. So you can start to interrupt between the two code bases um, now. The adding Flutter to an existing Android app is possible to do now. But so we are making great pains for anything that we have in our stable channel is now stable. We are not going to break things. Um, this is currently in our master branch, and it will graduate very shortly to our stable one. So you can play with it now, um, certainly in master, um, but um, it will come to stable soon, and at that point, then it will be fairly locked up. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I just had a question on animations, on how it's done in Flutter. Is it okay. 
to be done natively with Android and iOS, or does Flutter have plugins to help us get it through? So, because again, we control our renderer, we've built, a we've built an animations framework into Flutter. I haven't shown it today, but one of the strong points of Flutter is its flexibility in terms of creating animations. So we have a very powerful animations framework which lets you do transitions and fades and all the different things you want to do. We have a bunch out of the box, but you have access to be able to create um, animation. There is a whole section on the website on animations, and I encourage you to look at it. It's a more complicated um, um, topic because animations, for, you know, for obvious reasons. But like, even I can do animations, and I'm terrible at UI stuff. So we've, we've gone to great pains to make sure not only does it look beautiful, but it also animates as well. Uh, there's one down the back. Yeah, so uh, does Flutter consist of layouts or is it all just widgets? Everything is a widget. We don't have, we, we have not implemented layout code. The layout is done in the code itself. You've seen me use center. Um, for laying things out horizontally and vertically, we have rows and columns. For, we have tables, we have the concept of a stack where you can overlay things. Okay. Um, conceivably, like, it would be, it, it's conceivable that you could build your own layout um, structure, but we have found that laying out through the code, I mean, you've seen how I was doing things there and changing the layouts and whatnot. Um, we're super happy with how that's turned out. Um, again, some people like to use things like um, uh, 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 Sketch, um, and people are building plugins to generate from that. And there's been talk about the community actually building like a layout that then would get transferred in, um, into Dart code. But at the moment, this is what we've produced. And this is kind of, we produced it by design. We never intended to support layouts out of the box because we feel this paradigm for creating and laying out um, uh, uh, UI uh, fits very well with Flutter. Sorry. So, is there any chance that you'll be adding up OTA updates kind of features, same like React Native in future? It's something that we've talked about, but there is a fundamentally different way. I mean, we use, the, we use React Native and Flutter adopts the same reactive pattern. Under the hood, things are very different. React Native is JavaScript. JavaScript is being interpreted, and that's being mapped down to the native components and its rendering. And that flexibility gives React Native a great story for OTAs, because you can push JavaScript code, and you can pull it in, and it's good. Flutter has taken a different approach in order to you know, maintain app size and fluidity and whatnot, we compile down to native machine code, which means you're effectively having like a native library on the device for your app, which means pushing um, OTA code is actually a much trickier problem because of architecture, because of what you're pushing in terms of binary and whatnot. So there are technical challenges there. They can be overcome but this is not an immediate focus for us as we drive towards the 1.0 release. So I'm not saying never, but not in the near term. So Flutter supports OpenGL something? So, fl the so out of the box, no. We use an OpenGL slash Metal slash Vulkan canvas to render, okay. but we use the Skia renderer, which is a 2D rendering engine. And so, we have taken, like, you can think of us as, like, Unity is for games with 3D. Flutter is the same for apps and in 2D. And so you can do 3D transformations. We have a transformation widget. You can uh, move things around or what. But for things like wireframes and whatnot, we don't have support out of the box for that. It's something that people have asked for. It's something we might consider in the future. But at the moment, um, we're focusing much more on sort of the app-like 2D model. Thank you, sir. What is the build system like? Uh, do we use Gradle here like in Android? So if you saw when I was compiling initially, um, you would have seen at the bottom Xcode because Xcode is being um, uh, pulled in to create the IPA because in order to build for Apple, you need to use Xcode. You, there's no real way around it. Um, 
our Dart compiler does all the compilation for Dart, and then it basically creates the binaries, and then it hands it over to Xcode. It's the same for Android. So it's the standard Gradle. If you go into the Android um, folder, you'll see your Gradle scripts. It'll be very familiar to you. You can go in and configure it. You can configure ProGuard to do stuff. You can change your min and max SDK. You have all of the flexibility of being able to go and change your manifests and your Gradle. And what we will do again is, We'll get our Dart code down to binary, then we'll hand it over to um, Android or the, the Android SDK, and then we'll let Gradle take care of the build for us then. So you don't lose anything in terms of customizability for compiling to platforms because we still keep the, uh, the existing chains there. Like in Android, we can split the APK. Like we can create different uh, resolution appli uh, applications, right, for different devices. Yes, and I imagine, I've never tried it myself, and I've not seen anyone do it, but you could do the same thing, because again, you're just, you can go into, you can go into that structure. When you look at the Android um, project, you'll basically see the main activity is a Flutter activity, and the first thing it does is it shows the Flutter view. So you can go in and you can have different activities and do different things, and you can configure it in different ways. I'm not familiar with the nuances of creating um, multi-dex. Um, so in terms of what you do with the binaries and where they live, um, I'm not going to say, because invariably what I'll say is wrong. But because you have complete control over your Android project, including the code and the layout and everything, you should be able to leverage that to do whatever you'd like with your app. Thank you. All right, then, oh, one more. Okay, one more question. What databases can we use with Flutter? Excellent question. You, show, you, you saw that I showed shared preferences. It's not a database, but you can store data in it. That's nice. Um, you had, there's a really good plugin for SQLite. Um, so, we do so, so you have support for the standard ways of doing things. Um, we have plugins for Firebase um, if you want to do remote database pieces. Um, and I'm not sure if there are plugins for other remote databases. The one we are missing that I want to see is Realm. I'm hoping we'll get Realm at some point. One of the blockers for that is, um, at the moment, we don't have support from communicating from Dart code directly to um, NDK code. Um, that's something that we're going to address in the future. And I know f that Realm is written as um, uh, native libraries, I believe. I was told. So, um, you know, blame the person who told me. Um, but once we unlock the ability to actually hit C++ and NDK code, we unlock a bunch of those others as well. So I'm hoping when we rectify the, the, the C++ piece, which is on our plan to do, um, we'll unlock even more of those. So I am keeping you from coffee and everything else. So I just want to say thank you very much again, and it's been great.